Boy, oh boy, do we have a special reaction live stream for you all. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 SEC tournament champions, the Auburn Tigers. They take down the Florida Gators by the score of 86 to 67. What a game. What a bunch of stuff that we've got to talk about in this. This is our reaction stream for this, celebrating an SEC championship for the Tigers and talking about this game versus the Gators. All that's coming up right now. War Eagle Auburn family and a special War Eagle and welcome to you, our E2C Network family, the best little family within the Auburn family. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Your Tigers are the SEC Tournament champions, the second one in five years. And if I am not mistaken, folks, I think I have this correct. Five years to the date that the Tigers won their last SEC tournament championship under Bruce Pearl. And we know how all that year ended, how special that was. Some very eerily similar things seemingly going on here. A game versus the Florida Gators that has a lot to discuss, a lot that we need to give credit to for Todd Golden and uh, those fighting Gators. Some bittersweet storylines along with that, but we also do want to take the time to talk about and celebrate what we just witnessed with the Auburn Tigers. What we have coming up for you, we'll talk through the storylines, we'll talk through the stats, both individual, team, and just have fun together celebrating this extra special championship. And at the end, we'll look at what's coming up. A lot still to look forward to for your Auburn Tigers. Things that you could do for us, smash the like button if you're getting in here. You can do it on your replay, if you're watching live. But especially if you're watching live right now, we'd love for you to do that and post where you're watching from, your city, your state, international. Let us know uh, that you are here hanging out with us, spending some time uh, just celebrating another SEC title for the Auburn Tigers. I see a lot of fine folks already checking in. We got Chris, Corey, Micah is here, uh, our resident Bama fan. You know, this is what tournament championships feel like. <laughs> I know they won one recently. It's fine. Uh, so many fine folks checking in with us. Good to see all of you guys here. Uh, to talk about an incredible, incredible game. I, I would like to, at the start, uh, before we focus on what the majority of you are here for, is to hear thoughts about this game, um, and we'll focus on a lot of your reactions right now. But let's go ahead and acknowledge a um, obviously hard-fought game by the Florida Gators and Todd Golden. Obviously, some connections to him as being a protege of Bruce Pearl and uh, the connection we have with him as the assistant coach. And then, unfortunately, Micah, the um, starting center for the Florida Gators, going down in a very bad leg injury that maybe didn't seem that bad at first, but as we looked more upon it, uh, very, very sad and very, very – I mean, we, we've been rocked by um, injuries on our team too this year, so we can at least appreciate that, what they're all going through right now, his to a much more extent. So our prayers go out to him. Uh, and his family, and of course, the Florida Gators, Todd Golden, the rest of the everyone associated with that. Uh, they did not give up. They fought really hard, and in fact, made it pretty scary for the Auburn Tigers for the majority of this game. So um, credit goes to them. But with that being acknowledged and that being spoken about, folks, <laughs> hey, how does it feel, baby? SEC Tournament Champions once again. Uh, Bruce Pearl has made you guys a sec champion in some form or fashion i believe for the fourth time two regular season titles two sec tournament titles this is your latest one adding to his resume if there's any denying that bruce pearl was the right decision for auburn so many years ago that has now been completely shut making yourselves um just relevant in the sec knocking down old bad trends and making auburn part of the annual conversation not just in the SEC, but in all of college basketball. And there's a lot to discuss in terms of the implications of this tournament for Auburn, the SEC. We will do all of that on the back half. I know I see the comments already about what seed, that stuff. We're going to get there. We got to talk about this a little bit. So let's just focus in right now. What I want you from you guys right now on the live stream is you know, just things that stuck out to you from the game, things that you'd like to discuss before we hit stats and things like that, the major storylines. But I know the major storyline right now is things like this, <laughs> boom, you're, of course, your War Eagles, 
the Bruce's, all of that going on right now. Um, my goodness, just so many different celebrations out this a whole lot. Uh, the whole Jalen Williams thing on TikTok. I forget what you're talking about about that. Uh, Chris points out, I guess you were talking about the Florida player made me think a lot of Chuma. And I think a lot of times those moments, as tragic as they can be, they can be that galvanizing point. Because let's not forget that Chuma was playing very incredibly in postseason play, but especially that tournament thus far. And some would say he was the best player on the floor that year. And I think even Bruce said something to the effect that time he was the best of us. You could probably make that same uh, case for Micah. And I'm, I'm I haven't said his last name because I'm just going to butcher it, so I'm not going to do that uh, for Florida, the center. And boy, um, yeah, it, it can wreck you, but it can also galvanize you. And there was a moment there with the guard play from Florida that I really thought uh, that we were going to be in danger of them having a very similar moment, obviously in a very, uh, very bittersweet way. Michael, talking about it snowing in Auburn right now. This is one of those times that I want in the future for us to be doing this from Auburn, Alabama, uh, off in the distant future. And um, hopefully we can uh, be there live for things like this and do live streams from, for, from Tumor's Corner. And it's just going to be, it's going to be incredible. Uh, scene down there right now that I know a lot of you are sharing uh, pictures from, I'm sure right now. <laughs> and uh, in, in, absolutely incredible. Uh, Ross Doc said, on a serious note, if anyone comes calling for Pearl, Auburn just needs to hand him a blank check at this point. Bruce needs a raise. I think he's earned his paycheck and then some. Uh, Bruce has been very forward about, um, at least, you know, on the surface, about how it's not about money for him. They say that, obviously, you know, it's easy to say that when you're toting a million, several million dollars around every year. But um, it does feel like the money is not necessarily what he's there for at this point in his career, what he is potentially um, building at all has built at Auburn and what his legacy will go down as is absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, how about this? I can still see that you guys are all just so excited to talk about them. Pretty emotional, too, right now. I'm so happy. War Eagle. Auburn gets another trophy to add to that, you know, that trophy case in that trophy walkthrough that the players go through every year, uh, every game when they're at home coming out of the locker room, that one will be on display for the next team, the next several teams to look at and idolize. So th put yourself in this moment for a second, just, just for a little bit. It's not too far in the past, but it's far enough five years to the date that another SEC tournament was won, and that special, special team that went on into March Madness and made incredible amount of noise to the uh, to the Final Four, if I've got my dates correct. You kind of look to them, teams now look to them as that, that benchmark. What this team is doing right now is setting not a benchmark that makes you ignore that team, but saying, no, we could potentially be the standard right now. The way we battled in the toughest conference in the S in the entire college basketball this year. And yes, there's going to be people that it, try to battle me on that statement. But what you're going to see is that one, two, and three, all very good basketball teams. And let me say that for the Alabama fans. Remember, Alabama is a very good basketball team. Not a great team, but a very good one. Kentucky is a great basketball team with some hiccups. Tennessee is a great basketball team. And there are seven, and if you go down beyond that, there is quality throughout the SEC, which is why Auburn is the highest seed left at the end of everything to win the tournament. Six and seven were battling to play number three. The SEC was the toughest, most competitive, best basketball conference this year, hands down. And your Tigers may not have won the regular season title, but when everything settled, all the dust is gone, they are your SEC champions. And it's a good feeling at the top, isn't it, boys and girls? So with all that in mind, I know I'm, I'm missing a lot of y'all's comments here. Uh, John says, we looked well-balanced versus yesterday, in my opinion. Game was physical, but not a rugby scrum. Like yesterday, uh, we will be hard to beat if we keep this up. Comparing yesterday uh, to today, I think it's more so a difference of the two teams you're playing, especially after they lost their starting center. They were already going to be a little bit smaller. Their guard play is what propels them, as you saw as they made the comeback to get within a point of Auburn and potentially take the league a, uh, a couple of times. 
but um, by its very nature, it's a little bit different when you play a team like that versus a Mississippi State where they've got the bodies to body you um, and thus setting up a scrum of sorts and a lot of emotions and stuff like that. Um, you know, something I'm, I'm just now thinking off the top of my head, Auburn gets revenge uh, for its loss. So Auburn avenged his loss to Mississippi State earlier in the year, but gets, you know, takes this, a sweep of the series, I guess, in the season, if you want to count this. Um, they avenge their loss to Florida. They, they're getting another crack, crack at a App State or Baylor unless it happens in the tournament. Uh, Alabama, they rectified that. Tennessee, they won't get a crack at um, unless it happens in the tournament. But Auburn rectified a lot of wrongs this year, and I think I don't want that to be lost on a lot of people. Uh, Michael says, Auburn's toughness was what jumped out, and we have two legit teams in one, and that's why we're so deep. That's why so many people play so many minutes, even if they're not the point scores. I want to continue to point some things out to you all. If you want to find the makeup of a team, you don't look at its stars, because if that's the case, Mark Sears on Alabama, and Alabama would be at this point right now. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to take a shot at Alabama, but the rest of their team is not as complete as Auburn. You look beyond the stars. You look beyond the starters. You look at the role players. If you want to find a role player who has take made sacrifices on this, on this season, on this year, because we could talk about Jalen, too, and what he's done for his whole career, you look at Chris Moore. Chris Moore has answered the call. We've talked about this every single stream this week for the SEC tournament of being more aggressive, not just in defense. He's always been that way, but offensively being in the game, giving up his body, being available, making his shots when he's called upon. So to me, if you want to look at the makeup of the team, you look at the people beyond the obvious ones. You look at the, the role players and Chris Moore exemplifies that for Auburn in a lot of, a uh, lot of ways. Um, let's see here. Let's, the only thing I'm sad about is Florida losing their player like that. Hope he gets a re uh, recovery. We all do. Very, very sad uh, to see him go down that way. A lot more celebrations coming in. A lot of people are wanting us to get to the conversations around um, the, the implications for this game. That is coming. Stick with us. Let's look at some of the stats very quickly, okay? What I want for you guys to do right now in the chat don't give me a long explanation because we're down to trying to do a quick tally of everything. Who is your player of the game? Give me your uh, pick for that. Just a name. Janai, Jalen, whoever. Uh, Chad Baker, Mazzara. So while you're doing that, let me give you a few more um, stats from the players. Today, probably going to be your player of the game. Janai Broom, 19 points, 11 rebounds. He gets a double-double once again. It's been a little while. He's come up just a few rebounds short several times. Uh, Denver Jones continues to step up his play. 11 points for him. Chad Baker Mazzara with 10, and that is the only players to get into double digits. However, if you look at where the points were coming from, nobody scores less than four, and that's including Chris Moore, folks. Chris Moore with seven. Aiden Holloway with seven. Jalen Williams with only six today. And keep in mind, our bigs had a lot of foul trouble today. Uh, Katie Johnson with four, Trey Donaldson with eight. I do want to, I'll, I'll do that in a second. Uh, Chaney Johnson with seven, Dylan Cardwell with seven. I want to give credit to Trey. Um, you know, I, I try my best to keep things positive here and, and not, and not Pollyanna sunshine pumping, although that's what I'm accused of sometimes, but Hey, I'll take it. If that's what you're going to accuse me of, I'll take it. Um, but I was very upset with Trey for his play in the first half. But what I saw in the second half was a guy that responded to coaching, responded to opportunities. And so I got to give credit where credit is due. Made up a lot for some mistakes that he made with some errant passes, quite a few in the first half. Knocked down shots, made plays when it counted. It's some really crucial points. Again, it's not your mistakes that define you. It's what you do with those mistakes, what you do after them that define you. Uh, let's see. What does everybody say for our... Um, our vote, uh, we got a broom, we got a Donaldson, another Donaldson, D Janai. Oh, I'll take that as Janai. <laughs> I think it's pretty clear, folks, who we got. I like Cardwell, Bryant says. I like Cardwell. I understand that completely. Uh, but it's Janai Broom. And he's the star player on the team. 
most people would tell you he's not like the big name out there uh, for a lot of other people's like a uh, Kyle Flipkowski. Fl how can I ever say his name? Fl Flipkowski, uh, Zach Eby, uh, Mark Sears at Alabama doesn't get that name recognition as much as those guys. But what he does is handle his business for his team when he's needed most. And that's why he's the, the most important player on this team in so many fashions. Even when he doesn't get his points like yesterday, like we're used to, he's there, he's available, a steady force of calm in storms that have arisen even during this tournament. So that's your stats, your individual things for the game. Janai is most likely your player of the game. You could definitely get make a case for Trey the way he responded. Uh, I think Denver Jones deserves some credit to that as well. So now let's look at some individ, uh, excuse me, some team stats. Auburn 51% from the field today, 32% from the three-point arc. Great day for them. Not a great day for Florida, 36% from the field. And I want y'all to just take a second and look at this. 8% from the three-point arc, one of 13. If their guards shoot a lot better more what they're capable of this thing could have got scary but you could see the panic setting in when they weren't knocking down their shots auburn to their credit today uh very much improves in their free throw percentage champions will make free throws and free throws win championships 82 percent to 72 percent pretty decent day by both teams Turnovers. Auburn does lose this category, was very flippant with the ball, especially in the first half, and, and certain players as well were more flippant than others. Uh, 11 to 12, they lose that by one point. Rebounds, total rebounds dead even across the board. That was another area where we could have done a lot better, uh, but it's neutral across the board. So in the three most important team stats that we focus on here, uh, turnovers, rebounds, and free throws, Auburn wins one, ties one, loses one, but barely. And then when you factor in some other things, it really doesn't matter all that much because uh, they really made a difference in a lot of other areas of there. So we can look at a few more stats here if you, um, at the end before we get to some future discussions about implications for Auburn. Michael points out two huge threes and tough nose Ds all turny, turny long. Uh, if there isn't a spot for Janai in the NBA – then something is wrong with the NBA. Oh, he has solidified his place in the NBA draft, in my opinion. Of course, I'm not, um, you know, <laughs> I'm definitely not the one to make those calls. Uh, never underestimate the power of a double buy. Well said, well said. So um, a few other team stats to keep in mind before we talk about what I know that you all are focused on is the implications for this game. Uh, second chance points, Florida wins that by two. Bench points, Auburn wins that by 10. Uh, pretty even with points in the paint, which is a little bit surprising to me. Now, when I keep talking about Florida's guards, they do have some great big men, and you wonder how things might have worked out if their player Micah hadn't gone down the way he did early in the game. Auburn does win points in the paint, though. Um, where you saw Florida's potential big difference was going to be the fast break points, 23 to 10. Their guards really had the ability to do what they wanted when they got Auburn into foul trouble so quickly. I want you to look at assists, though. Nine for Florida, 18 for Auburn. Sharing the ball, doing the little things is what made this team be so dominant against a great Florida team. Um, so many things that you could focus on here and talk about in stats, but let's be honest. Y'all want to talk about what's next and celebrate this a little more. So... We're going to do that. We are going to do that. That's coming up next. Let me take this quick second in the show to remind you of a few things before we round out our talk with what's next for the Tigers. Here is our planned tentative schedule here on YouTube. Of course, we broadcast to other places, but you have to keep in mind that things do change from time to time in terms of uh, things we might add into the schedule. But here's what you don't want to miss on. We know the brackets are coming out later. Right now, we don't have anything scheduled for that other than social media posts. But tonight, you can bet we will be focusing on this on the Auburn Experience podcast, live recording 9 Eastern time tonight. Do not miss it. Austin was at the game, folks, and it didn't matter. He didn't jinx us. So he will be back to talk with me um, 9 Eastern time this evening. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern time, we are doing a live bracket fill out together. We are having our E2C Network Bracket Contest, and I can announce this officially now. Brought to you by our friends 
at Barner Brand Co. You know them on X slash Twitter. Uh, you've seen them a lot of other places. They are going to be our prize sponsor this year. So join us tomorrow night for our live Pick'em Show where you will help us fill out the bracket. Tuesday night, right after baseball, we'll be talking about the week that was. Wednesday night, live stream, 8 Eastern time for anything Auburn. I know where the focus will be, though. And then, of course, we will have post-game streams on whatever day we have our March Madness game. So don't miss out on any of this that we have scheduled for you all. It is going to be quite fun. All right. Here's what I'd love to know from the chat right now. Where do you think Auburn is going to seed? If you looked at, and just, again, give me one simple response. I'm trying to do a quick tally in the live chat. Give me two, three, four. <laughs> if you do four at this point, I think. Um, well, I don't know. I, I, who knows what the committee is going to pick. But I want to see what you guys think. Not where you think they deserve to be, but where do you think the committee is going to put this Auburn basketball team? I want to know where you think they seed them. Coming in to the tournament, most people had Auburn as one of the final four seeds, final four, the last four seeds to be named to that position. I think winning a game in the SEC tournament solidified them in that spot. Winning a second game made them into the conversation for a three seed. And now winning the tournament outright the way they did, I think it should, should and I, I think they deserved it, but I think the committee would even acknowledge based on what Auburn showed throughout the season and at the end of the year that they deserve to be a three seed. We could be wrong. I could be wrong, but what do you guys think? I see a lot of threes coming in. I got one, four Robbie says he, I think he's being cynical about the, um, about the, <laughs> um, committee, which I understand completely. Uh, but three seems right. Four committee might have already made their bracket, of course. There is that uh, to think about. Um, but I think they are in position to be a three seed, especially with like Duke losing a little bit early in their tournament. You know, uh, John points out maybe the last two. I, I would not get your hopes up for anything beyond a three, but here's the thing, folks. Auburn played in this tournament and then their body of work throughout the season, I think, shows what type of team they are when you paint the whole picture and not just cherry pick those bad moments that every team had this year, they could be a number two seed. Not going to happen probably, but they could have a conversation about it. It would be almost like where we started in the SEC tournament, being in the conversation for a four needed a win probably to solidify that. And then so on and so forth into the conversation for a three so on and so forth. Now we're maybe in position for a two. Maybe. Don't think it's likely, but we'll see. What do you guys think? Locations? Let me hear some thoughts. I know some of you were sharing them earlier, but don't be shy now. Locations, opponents, who do you not want to see? Who do you want to see? What do you just right now? This is a reaction stream. There's a flow of thought. Let me hear what you guys think about the future of Auburn in the coming week for March Madness. And keep in mind, in about two to three hours, we will probably know Auburn's seating. So I know that if you're watching this on the replay, it's kind of moot at this point, but you can at least see what we all thought. Um, uh, who will be the highest seeded team from the SEC? That's a good, th that's a good way to ask this. Um, I think Tennessee's body of work throughout the season and their star power will make them the highest seeded team. Now, what that means is they could fall back into, you know, a very low two, a high three, and Auburn and them maybe the both be a three, but they would still be the higher seeded three. I think Tennessee is still going to be the highest seeded SEC team. I think Auburn is right behind them, though. I'm just giving respect where I think his respect is due. Everybody has a bad game. This league was incredibly competitive all year, and especially so in the tournament, so I can't hold that against them. I still think that they're one of the best and in conversation as the best in the SEC still in terms of matchups, head-to-head, things of that nature. I'd like to play a game uh, against them at Neville to see how that works out. I think I know how it would work out <laughs> to get a better picture of who truly is better. But I do think that's a great question to ask EKW. 
Uh, only top 10 in offensive and defensive efficiency. That's a big stat you're seeing thrown around in conversations about where Auburn should land, should not land. So that's a good thing to bring up. Um, there's always these fun little stats of no team uh, who has not made their conference semifinals, has never made it to the Final Four and such and such. And, you know, obviously those stats are there for a reason, but I wouldn't hold your bracket to that a whole lot. Um, uh, final four is in Phoenix could be ironic. I see the irony, Richard. I see what you're doing. Does anybody else see it? Uh, anywhere, but the East don't want to play a virtual Yukon road game. That's a good thought. That's a very good point. Auburn travels well, as we saw today. And I believe that they'll travel well, no matter where they go but you don't want to go into someone else's territory. And with UConn probably being um, up there in that category, that's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. Here's what I feel like is going to happen, though. Can I just be honest with you? Auburn got such a great seating in the SEC, the best that you could in probably one of, in one of the toughest SEC tournaments that I know in quite some time or can remember in quite some time. We're probably due for the worst possible seating in the history of the NCAA tournament. Can we just be honest? That just feels like it's how it's going to shift. I'm not trying to call it into be it to being, but it just feels like it's going to be that way. I'd love to play UAB or Sanford in Memphis. There's a lot of people that say, don't sleep on Sanford. Um, UAB would be cool. Um, I love the Alabama connections, but folks, you know, I don't know if I'd wish that on us right now. I think we need some team that nobody's expecting us to play to start off with and just hopefully handle business. Because if you're a three seed, you play that 14 seed. That's not uncommon for 14 seeds to knock off threes. We'll play in Pittsburgh, not the furthest to travel for Auburn people. Auburn North, Nashville folks, y'all should join them. Uh, a lot of people hoping for Memphis. In 2019, we had the worst seeding ever and made it to the Final Four. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say ever. I don't know that you can necessarily prove that. But when you talk about UNC or Kansas, UNC, Kentucky, and then you had to run into Virginia in the Final Four, you could make a case that that was the toughest ever um, by the way things worked out. Um, but the way Auburn handled a couple of those teams, UNC, Kansas, and made them look silly, yeah. It made it, we didn't make it look so tough after all. All right. We're at about almost 30 minutes on this stream. We usually stay on for about 30 minutes, but we don't have to go. If there's things that you all would still like to talk about. So don't be shy. Please do uh, drop in um, any comments, topics that we have not hit about this game, about this championship that you would love to talk about, about what's next. I don't want to leave without hitting all the things that you'd like to discuss. Uh, but please do make sure you smash the like button if you haven't. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow everywhere else if you're watching somewhere else to make sure you stay up to date with all the content we have for you. And keep in mind, our bracket contest this year is going to go live tonight. Do not miss it. It will go live tonight. And you can start signing up and making your bracket. So please do join us this year. Brought to you by our friends at Barner Brand Co. They are our prize sponsor for this year. I hope you guys will support them in um, by support us through supporting them as well. They're a great uh, company and gotten to know them recently that I hope you guys will uh, check them out. And uh, we're excited to have them on board. I hope you guys can join us tomorrow night. Is anybody planning? Raise the hands. Probably no one's going to raise their hands or just say yes, no. Anybody going to join us tomorrow night for the bracket build? I will warn you that it's going to take a long time. So if you can't stay the whole night, now, when I say the whole night, I, I want to get out of there as soon as we can. But to say that we will be done in less than two hours, I'd be lying to you. I will be shocked. I'm anticipating about a two-hour stream starting at eight, building the bracket together. It'll probably end up being Auburn National Championship because that's what you as the Auburn family always pick. <laughs> but... Uh, we're still going to have fun with it along the way. Maybe it'll help you pick your bracket. You can start filling it up alongside us. Uh, we didn't run into Virginia. We ran into the refs. Well said. <laughs> Very well said. I will not disagree with you um, a lot on that. 
Chris says, how long are we talking for the stream tomorrow night? I, I think we went two and a half hours last se uh, last year. Uh, my goal would be for us to move as briskly as possible, but what, how we operate with it is we, um, I'll say some intros and we're going to get going. We're going to go game by game. So give me a pick and we're going to go through it. We people asked for it this year. I don't know if people actually want it except for a handful of you, but we're going to do it because people asked for it. So I hope that you'll join us and hope you'll uh, be there to join in on the fun because it's usually a bunch of shenanigans. So grab a seat, uh, get your, your typing fingers ready because we need lots of votes to help us pick the tournament. Uh, what? 64 games, no, sorry, 64 uh, teams, 62, Kyle, get your math right, 64 games, uh, which would be 32, I'm trying to do all the math in my head, 32 games, 16, 8, I'm not going to, somebody do the math for me, tell me how many games will actually be uh, picking, solid maybe then, well, turn yourself into a solid yes, again, you don't have to be there for the whole time, but we'd love to see some folks there. Uh, Brian says, I wish they would show, have showed them cutting down the nets. Uh, TV time is precious and unfortunately they've got to get to some other coverage, but you know that the great staff over there, um, the social media team for Auburn basketball has got you covered. They'll have video posted and you'll be able to capture all of it. Again, super jealous of everybody who's in Auburn, able to roll tumors right now for a championship. Don't know when the team is getting there but I'm sure that they will be arriving sometime this evening because they're staying in uh, Nashville for their pick. So I'd imagine it's going to be later this evening uh, tonight. 68 teams, 65 games, I think. So 32 games in the first round, 16. That would be 48 to start with. Then eight more games, which would be, wow, 48. That would be 56. Four more games, 60. Wouldn't it be 63 games? Maybe I'm wrong. If you're counting the other play-in games, maybe that's what I'm missing. A lot of people still popping in to celebrate. Good to see all of you fine folks here. Great question, Chris. Let me. We'll get there. Four bubble games, 64 tournament games. There you go. All right. Was Janai the tournament MVP? I'm sure they've already named who's the tournament MVP. In fact, let me um, let me pull up my email and see if I've gotten the media press release here. I've got our um, championship notification, but I'm not seeing anything from the athletic department as of this moment um, about who was the tournament champion. If anybody else has seen that, the term tournament MVP. But who do you think? Who do you think should be the tournament MVP? Janai is the MVP. I, I thought that's who it would be. I think Denver had a case to be in the conversation there, but it's hard to ignore what Janai did and showed against some of the, the bigger teams out there against South Carolina, against uh, Mississippi State especially, and some big guys against Florida too. He really showed why he was a, an incredible Incredible player for the SEC, and if Dalton Connect wasn't being an absolute monstrosity this year, he probably would be the SEC player of the year. But tournament MVP, I'm sure he will add that to his resume, take that che check to the bank after the March Madness, and say, folks, I am ready for the NBA. <laughs> um, all right, final thoughts, comments, derogatory rebuttals, celebrations. Get them in now. How about this? Everybody still watching a collective War Eagle, S, just SEC championships, SEC chant, whatever you want in the chat right now. Just spam it out. Get yourselves locked out of the chat because it thinks you're a spam bot uh, as a final kind of celebration. Again, your Tigers win 67 to 86. An incredible response. Some challenges faced throughout the entirety of this tournament. Our hearts go out. Uh, to the Florida Center, who suffered a horrific leg injury. Great response by them. Happy we got to see a um, a former assistant coach in Todd Golden. So fun. I told y'all, I promised you that you would see an incredible, competitive, exciting SEC tournament. 
But I have to be lying if I told you that I thought Auburn would make it out as SEC tournament champions. And boy, was I am I glad I was wrong. I thought they would make it to the tournament game, but I thought all Kentucky would be there to take us out at the end. Folks, what a run, and it ain't over yet. Join us tonight, 9 Eastern time, for some more content and more discussions on our podcast live recording where we'll talk to you as well. And tomorrow night and so many other things this week. We have got a lot to do. Get some sleep. Take a nap. Saddle up, boys and girls. Your Tigers are SEC champions, and we are not done talking and covering them here on E2C Network. Thank you for joining us and being part of our little family within the Auburn family. Until we talk to you again, War Eagle.